Example three says a rectangular box with a square base. That's very important that you see that it does have a square base. And no top is to have a volume of 588 centimeters cubed. The surface area is 385 centimeters squared. What are the dimensions? Before we go into this, I need to review volume of surface area. First off, it is a rectangular box. And it says the bottom, let's see if I can draw this. It says the bottom is square has a square base. There's no top. Thank you. Rectangular base, um, no top, or excuse me, square base, no top. Volume is surface area. Volume is how much material will fit into this box. How much it takes to fill it. Surface area is the area of all the surfaces. In this shape, how many surfaces do you have? Be careful there's no top. There's five. You've got the four sides and you have the bottom. Surface area is going to be the area of those five surfaces. Volume is the how much will fill it. Does, does the volume, does it not having a top affect the volume? No. No. That's it because you're talking about filling. Um, how do you find volume of a rectangular prism? Hmm. That's, you're, you're getting on surface area. Volume. It's something cubed. All you got to do for volume, length times width times height. Easy. Take uh, this side times this side times this side. Because what you're actually doing there, the reason that's how you find volume, and I know this is an eighth grade lesson, but um, as you get to be juniors and seniors, you start to actually understand why it works the way it does. When you do this times this, do you see that you just found the area of the bottom? And then when you multiply it by this, you're stacking those areas. And you're saying, okay, if I had uh, 100 of those, how much volume would I have? And that's, that's what you're actually doing when you're finding, finding the volume of this, is you're finding the area of the bottom, and you're multiplying it times the height to say, okay, this is how many of them I have. And it's five high, so you'd have five of those 20s, which would be a volume of 100. Makes sense? Um, so that's volume. Now surface area. Surface area is exactly what it says. It's the area of the surfaces. Like Brent says, you have five surfaces. Find the area of each. What shapes are they? You've got two different shapes. You have four rectangles, one squares. You're going to find the area of the four rectangles, find the area of the one square, and add it together. Hmm. Well, actually in this one, yes, it would be. Multiply by four, find one of them, and then find the area of the, the bottom, and that's going to be it. Let's go back to the problem, though says has a square base, no top. We don't know any of the dimensions. I'm going to let the height be h. Are we going to have three different variables? No, we're not. Why are we not going to have three different variables? Because what's special about the bottom? Because it's a square, the length and width are the same. I'm going to let it be x and x. Makes sense. That If it wasn't in this, this way, if you had three unknowns, if you had l, w, and h, you would have to have three different equations to solve it. And then we'd get into matrices and all that good stuff to, in order to solve that. But it says volume is this, surface area is this. Let's find out some formulas for our volume. We, we can use what we have here to find, to find formulas. Length times width times height. What is length times width? X and X. X squared times H. Length times width times height. That's how you find it. And Cody gave us a pretty good uh, start in on our um, surface area here. What's what's going to be the area of this front side here? Not x squared, just the area. Flat surface, the width is x. x times h would be the area of the front. Do you see, notice the side over here. It's x, h, x times h is the area of the side, it's the area of the back, it's the area of the left side. So you have four of those, four xh's plus x squared. Perfect. That's your surface area. Okay. So now let's go back to our problem and see what else it says. It says the volume is going to be 588. The surf area, surface area is going to be 385. So the volume is going to equal 588. The surface area is going to equal 385. So I can erase V equals and S equals. So now I have two equations, 
two unknowns, now it's like that first probable word. No. That's all it gives us. Two equations, two unknowns, we can work this. Solve one of them for a, a single variable. This one is important what you solve it for because I'm not going to want to solve this thing for x. Because in either one, x is going to be hard to get. It's going to be really hard to get by itself in the second one. The first one, you're going to have to divide by h and take the square root of both sides. It would be a whole lot easier to get h by itself. Y'all see that? Not to subtract, they're being multiplied. So divide. So h is going to be 588 divided by x squared. We're going to plug that into our second one to get rid of our h's. And the reason for that, you see we're going from having two unknowns to just having one unknown. And we can solve for that one unknown, and then we can go back and fill it in to find the second one. So we got 4x times h plus x squared equals 385. Now all we have is x's. h is this. So just where I had an H, I put that. It is ugly, but we can't clean it up. We don't have to clean it up. <clears throat> um, we can clean this up. Do we have to? No. Uh, because you could use your rules for exponents, which we haven't done this year. If you don't know them yet, no big deal. Because you could do 4X over 1, cancel an X with an X squared, multiply your 4 and 588 and all that. You don't have to do it. What I'm going to do is calculate this problem because it's not quadratic. You would think it is, but when, if you did cancel that x with the x squared, do you see you still have an x on bottom? Quadratics can't have an x on bottom. That'd be like x to the negative one if you remember your negative exponents. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to that first section, 2.1, to where I showed you how to solve equations with calculators. I'm going to move my 385 over. And I'm going to graph 4x times this plus x squared minus 385 equals 0. And to solve this, I'm just going to look and see where it crosses the x-axis. So pull up my graphing calculator. And type in y equals, let me clear what I have in there, y equals 4x, and this is going to be nasty to type in, 4x times 588 divided by x squared plus x squared minus 385 enter hit graph and I do have an intersection there so obviously let me do zoom standard you see we have an intersection point that's, that's what we're looking for. Um, we have a solution there. Is there going to be more than one solution? I don't know. Um, let's talk about our scale here. and Let's talk about things that x could be. Since we're talking about volume and surface area, our x's or h's have to be positive. That makes sense. We're not going to have negative answers here because we're talking about, again, distance. x has to be positive. h has to be positive. Uh, what could X be? It could be anything from 0 up to, I would say, look at this first. X squared times H is 588. I'd say 0 up to about 20 or 30. So to check to see if you have more than one answer, I'd change my window. You don't need negatives. i do maybe 0 to, I'm going to try 25. Oops. 0, enter, 25. Enter, let the scale be maybe 5. 0 to 10 be perfectly fine. We've got two different answers. And it looks quadratic. It looks like a parabola. And we're looking for, because think about it, I moved this over and I set it equal to 0. So we're looking for the intersects on this one. We don't have two different graphs. So the way we're going to find the answer is we do second calc, looking for the, set, the 0. Left bound, right bound, um, let's go back to it. Let's see, each tick mark I let be five. Do you see a left bound would be five for that? A right bound is maybe 15. Guess, just hit enter again. Seven, zero. So x equals seven is one of our solutions. I let it be five because each tick mark I let be count five. 
So this would be 5, this would be 10, 15. You could do 5 and 10 as left bound and right bound. But x equals 7 is my first answer. Let's, let me write that down before I forget it. x equals 7. And I do have another solution. x equals, I'm going to let be 10 and 20 as my left bound and right bound and do it again. Looking for my 0. Left bound 10, right bound 20. Yes, enter. My second solution, 15.16. Uh, my first one, left bound and right bound, you could let be 5 and 10. Just something on the left side of it, something on the right side of it. Second one, I did maybe 10 and 20, I think. Now again, we got to go back and, and see, have we answered our, our question? It says, what are the dimensions? X is 7, X is 7. Let's check it here. Let's find our height there. So we know that x squared times h has to give us 588. Let's find h. Or we could actually find it probably easier there, <laughs> couldn't we? Because h is equal to 588 divided by x squared. When x is 7, you've got 588 divided by what? 49. So the height would be... Somebody want to type that in for me? So when x is 7, we have 588 divided by 49, which is... So there's our first dimensions. When x is 15.16, we have 588 divided by 15.16 squared. Or if you want to, you can type that whole thing in your calculator, 15.16, and it'll give you a more exact answer. But um, 588 divided by 15.16 squared, anybody got that yet? So we see here our second answer, we'll call it 2.6. Well, this one's rounded to two decimal places, so let's round that one to two decimal places. 2.56. So which one's right? They're both right. If you went back and checked it, and you have, you have two different re rectangular prisms you could use here, that if you found the volume of this, both would have a volume of 588. If you found the surface area for both of these, they'd both have a surface area of 385. So both of those are legitimate. So to actually write dimensions, though, I would say it's 7 by 7 by 12 is the dimensions of the first one, length times width times height. And the second one would be 15.16 by 15.16 by 2.56. Okay, example four. It says you have invested $550 in stock with an annual return of 11% means after one year you'll get an extra 11 percent of that 550 uh, in return how much of an additional eleven hundred dollars should be invested at 12 percent and how much at six percent so that the total return on the entire thing would be of 1650 that's your total money would be nine percent that sounds really confusing this one's one of, actually one of the easier ones you have three different investments and I'm going to represent them with boxes You have three different investments, and then you're going to have your total investment. Your first investment, they just flat out tell you. It says you have invested $550 in a stock that returns 11%. So you invest $550 in a stock that returns 11%. So do that for me. 11% uh, of that 550, or I'll do it up here. So we have 11%, 0.11 times 550, $60.50. So that means after one year, in addition to the 550 that you've invested, they give you back $60.50. That's how much you made. So that I like that because that kind of shows you what we're going to do for the second two. Your second investment says how much of an additional $1,100 should we invest at 12% and one at 6%? So one of these investments is going to be a 12% investment, and one of them is going to be a 6% investment. We have $1,100 to split between the two of them. If we invest X dollars here. Okay, we're not going to do that. If we're going to, we're, because we're not investing the entire $1,100 there. We're only investing part of it. We're going to invest part of it here, 
and the other part of it there. This trick that I'm about to show you pops up a lot. If, if you're going to do part here, part here, if there's a total of $1,100, what if I invest $600 in the first one? What am I investing in the second one? Five, was it, wasn't it 1100 So 500 600 500 What if I invested 700 in the first one? How much just going in the second? 400 How are you finding those? So if we invest X dollars at 12%, if there's 1100 total dollars, y'all got it figured out yet? 1100 minus X. Because if you invest 500 here, then you invest the other 1100 minus the 500, the 600 there. If you invest $200 here, then you invest $1,100 minus $200, $900 there. Does that make sense? Equals final investment. We want our final investment to be $1,650 at 9%. We can actually figure that one. $1,650, 9%, that's going to be 0 .09 times $1,650, bless you, equals $148.50. Now it's easy. Now it's easy. Because we're going to set up the equation. Our next equation, we only have one unknown, which that's the reason I know it's going to be easy. We've got a linear equation here. It's just plain old x. We're going to add up, and our, our equation is going to come from how much money we're going to make. The first investment, we made $60.50 plus. This is the only part that might throw you off. How much money are you going to make off this second investment? X times 0.12, perfect. 12% of X, whatever X may be. Plus, what are you going to make off the third investment? And make sure that you do put that in parentheses because it's times the entire thing. And then equals $148.50. Now it's a linear equation, just go through the steps of solving. Uh, distributed property, let's get rid of parentheses, so you got 60.5 plus 0.12x. So here we go, uh, again, distributed property, 0 0.06 times 1100 should give you 66 minus 0 0.06 times x is 0 0.06x equals 148.5. Clean up the left side, we can combine 60.5 and 66, that will give us 126.5. We can combine 0.12x minus 0.06x, which I believe gives you plus 0.06x, equals 148.5. That's it. Subtract 126 from 148, that gives you 22, just plain old 22. And the last step, I'll have to use calculator. 22 divided by 0.06 gives you 366 and two thirds, or x equals $366.67. That's, that's going to be the other part. Let's, let's do that. So we're investing, to actually answer the question, is how much should you invest at 12%? So this much, that's your X. You invest this much at 12%, and 1100 minus that would be 